if you think about it, we have a pretty slick, pretty fun actually, um, physics simulation here. Sorry, it's <laughs> you'll notice once you get something like this going, you can get distracted very easily. Just wait till we start doing particle effects; your your time will be consumed. Um, anyway, we have a very interesting. Uh, animation there and we don't have very much code. It didn't take very much code to get that effect and a lot of this, I mean this is repetitive, we could probably clean that up some and then a lot of the code was this OpenGL stuff which I haven't talked too much about. I hope you were able to copy that code and, and use it directly and, and we'll get into more how this works later. Uh, but if you think about it, here's here's the OpenGL code. I'm just going to collapse that. Then the paint GL, that's just a matter of updating our vertice positions and so we have update which updates the ship position we have some uh, members here of our compilation unit and we check the keys and that's it there's really not much to making this example work which is quite rewarding this this is a part of the the, the thing that makes game programming so interesting to me it's it's mathematical it's challenging it's fun it's much more challenging than any type of programming I've done in any other uh, environments and, and it's just it's awesome I love it so I hope you love it too and I hope you're having a good experience learning as we go uh, there's something that's been rubbing me wrong though here is this ship position gets ship position plus ship velocity blah 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 I really just want to say ship position plus equals ship velocity and this might be a little tangent to where we're at but I think we had some other areas Nope, I guess that's it. I just, I want to be able to say, hey, vector plus equals another vector. Alright, so how are we going to do that? Well, control shift B, build started, build failed, it's saying, hey, you don't define this operator. Well, let's go define that operator. Here in the math portion of our engine, go to vector 2D H, and I want to say, uh, should we make it a member or a non member? function. Well, it's an assignment operation, so it's going to have to be a member operator. Inline. Actually, I don't have to say inline because, well, do I? Do I? I do because I'm going to write the declaration here, but the implementation I'm going to write in vector 2 d.inl. Okay, so uh, operator, let's see, it returns a vector 2d reference operator plus equals uh, const vector 2d reference right and then I'm actually since we're gonna do plus equals I wanna let's 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 go all the way I'm gonna say minus equals and let's even do assignment I'm gonna say inline vector 2d operator assignment so now we can do assignment we can do uh, plus equals we can do minus equals and let's also implement the copy constructor vector 2d const vector 2d reference source notice I'm giving variable names here because I do think that, that the variable names add meaning here this is the right operand of these operators and we're going to make a vector 2d from this source vector so on and so forth okay let's copy these and go write their definitions in this inline file we created earlier. Uh, highlight, control KF, no longer need the inline because we already uh, declared them as inline. Put curlies out here and curlies here. I'm actually going to pause the video so you don't have to watch all this. Okay, so I have these all typed out. Here's our empty copy constructor. And then notice for the implementation for all these operators, I'm just going to return a zeroed vector 2D. Well, why am I doing this? Hopefully you remember from test driven development, I need to write my tests first before I actually implement these. Ensure that when the tests fail, then come back, implement these, make sure the tests pass. Good time to commit our code at that point. So if the unit testing doesn't interest you, feel free to implement these and then skip this part of the video. Uh, but we're going to go to Engine Vector 2D Tests and go down here and just add some more tests. Test. Once again, Vector 2D. And let's call this Copy Constructor. And what else should we test? We're going to test the... We'll test the assignment operators. 
assignment operators. And ideally, I'll see how many tests we get written in here. Maybe we end up splitting it up. Ideally, tests are short and sweet. And the more granular you can make your test, then, then if something fails, you know roughly pretty much where it where it failed. But if this function was like a thousand lines long, well, and it failed somewhere, then we got to say, oh, well, where did it fail? And go and debug it, and so on and so forth. Okay. Vector, did I already bring the namespace in? I did vector 2D source. Uh, let's just say 5, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, point five, six, seven, eight. I'm just doing some random numbers to to so we can get some interesting results. Vector 2D, the copy, and we're going to copy our source. And then expect float equal the copy dot x is going to be equal to source dot x and same things with the y and I think that's probably all we need to do there. I'm going to control alt L bring up solution explorer right click set this is my startup project control F5 make sure we build and run um, oh <laughs> You see what's going on? <laughs> we have a we have an issue here. Every every time I want to run my tests, I have to wait for those timing tests to execute. Oh, and this is going to make writing unit tests hard. Okay, remember we we uh, wrote these tests to take up a long amount of time, and overnight, yeah, they'd work fine. But this is definitely going to hinder my productivity. So how am I going to get around this? Preprocessor to the rescue. Let's do this. I'm going to say. Uh, where are those time tests? They're in our clock tests, aren't they? Let's say, boom, 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 boom. right here. Here's our long running test. So, so let's just say this. I'm gonna say, pound if defined overnight tests. I'm just gonna make up a macro. And pound and if. So if we're not doing the overnight tests, and actually these tests might take some time too. So I'm going to go full out and just put that there. If, if to find overnight tests, we're going to do that. Notice it goes gray. That's Visual Studio helping us out there saying, hey, uh, this macro is not defined, so we're just going to uh, vaporize this code. The compilers, or the preprocessor is just going to not include it when the preprocessor runs a t test. And then over here I can say, well, engine tester properties, uh, C++ preprocessor, if I say overnight tests here with a semicolon, that's going to define that macro for the entire project. So notice here that this comes back in. So it will no longer be vaporized. So we can condition, we can set up a framework to conditionally add or remove this overnight test depending. I'm just going to say no overnight tests here, so it's different from overnight tests. So then this will go away and our tests will execute quickly again. Save this file, close this. Uh, Alright, back here, copy constructor. Control F5, this should fail because the copy constructor does nothing right now. It's look nice and red. Ooh, I'm feeling good. This is test driven development. Stuff's not good. Alright. Um, if I wanted to be truly religious, I'd go implement the copy constructor and then I'd come in and implement. Ah, oh, why not? Let's be religious. Why not? Uh, vector 2D INL copy constructor is pretty easy to write where you just need to say x gets source.x and y gets source.y. Now, if I really wanted to feel good, I could say this like that, but oh, I just can't stand having tokens on the screen that take up my brain bandwidth and screen room if I don't need them. It's not necessary here because if I say x, that's this instance already, and then this x is already scoped inside of source, so I'm not going to say this everywhere. Uh, build that, control F5, let's make sure these tests pass. We passed, we're good, good time to commit, so let me pause the video and do that. Okay, we're committed. Now let's uh, write some code to test these uh, assignment operators. So vector uh, just to be quick, let's grab this. Ba Boom, source, and then vector, come on, vector 2D, another. I'm just going to say 1, 1 here. 
And then here we go, another get source. And if I wanted to be really picky, I could say expect float equal another dot x is one and another dot y is one. Just just saying, hey, it's one. We, it should be one. We already tested this, didn't we? And then we're going to use the assignment operator, say another gets source, and then down here, expect float equal another dot x is going to be source, whoops, source dot x, and expect float equal another dot y is source man, having a hard time today, dot y. Now, we're assuming that the constructor for source works and is actually going to store these values instead of zeros, and same thing here. Um, and since we tested the constructor, we can feel good about that, that's true. But, but just because I'm really picky, I'm going to go as far as saying expect float equal magic number 5. Uh, actually, let's do another dot x should be magic number five and expect, expect, expect float equals another dot y. That should be equal to negative one, two, three, four dot five, six, seven, eight. Give me an eight. There we go. All right. So that's the that's the assignment operator. And I think I will be a little bit granular here. I'm going to say assignment operator. That should fail. Just that one assignment operator, because we haven't implemented the assignment operator. Yes, red looks ugly. Ooh, that's scary. Uh, vector two d to inl assignment operator is real simple. I need to say x gets right dot x and y gets right dot y, and then return star this. Okay. Now, if you're unfamiliar with assignment operators. Go check out the C++ operator overloading playlist, but essentially we're turning a reference to ourselves so that we can be, we can chain these assignment operations. So if I had v1, I could say, or right, let's just v1 gets v2 gets v3 and so on and so forth. Well, v3 will be assigned to v2, but v2 is going to return itself so that that value can be read and be further assigned to v1. So that's why we return uh, vector 2d reference, which is this object. Okay, so let's control F5. This should build run and the test succeed. Feeling good. Go to source control, commit. Now we need to overload the plus equals and the minus, or we need to test them at least and overload them. Vector 2D um, plus equals. <laughs> uh, let's do this. Assignment. I'm just trying to put these alphabetical somewhat group them together with the prefix assignment. So assignment plus equals. Let's do that. We're going to test that. And then for consistency, grab this, go down here, and we're going to do minus equals. Minus equals. And then again, I'm going to I'm just going to grab these two guys, paste them right here, control KF, format it. And then let's say, uh, Vector 2D result gets source plus another. I'm actually going to go as far. Oh, no, 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 that's not going to work. We need to, let's do this. Another plus equals source. So then expect float equals that another dot x. Well, what is another gonna, dot x going to be? It's going to be 1 plus 5. So Six, that should be equal to six, and then expect float equal another dot y. That's going to be one uh, plus a negative one, two, three, four. So I'm feeling that's going to be negative one, two, three, three dot five, six, seven, eight. And I think that should be good, except I should probably put an n here instead of an h. And simple test, I could write other tests to really beat this up like we did with the clock test, but well, uh, I, th I think I'm happy with this. And then we need to do minus equals. Well, <laughs> can I cheat? Control C, Control V, copy paste errors. I feel them coming. I'm not feeling very professional with all my copy paste, but, but, uh, eh, whatever. Let's keep going. Uh, minus equals, so 5 minus 1 
Let's see, it's another minus source. So that's going to be 1 minus 5. So 1 minus 5 will give us, uh, will yield a negative 4. And 1 minus negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, that's the same as adding them. So I'm going to do plus. Actually, I'll leave the plus off. And then it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 5. Control Shift B. Build succeeded. Run. Tests failed. Good job. Let's implement this code. Um, let's see. Plus equals right. So x plus equals right dot x. Now I'm using the plus equals here on float, so I'm relying on the compiler to now use its native, uh, the native machine instruction for plus equals. And then y plus equals right dot y. Return star this again. And then minus equals, same thing. In fact, let's just copy and paste. And we can do minus and minus. And hopefully this, let's, let's see if the test pass. Control F5. Hopefully the test pass. Looks like I'm getting a lot of green. Feeling good about it. Okay. So one other little last thought that I could give is I could have implemented this operator vector 2d temp gets uh, star this plus right and this is going to execute the uh, binary version of operator plus and then I could say well we could just do this star this gets star this plus right and we could have done the same thing down here but I I am um, I know these vector classes we're going to use them a lot we're going to rely on their operator overloads, that sort of thing. And this causes a temporary object to be created. It also causes another function call. Well, actually, we inlined it, so I guess it would, the compiler would inline the code there. Um, but either way, I'm trying to avoid the temporary object and all that. So I'm going to the effort of actually saying, hey, let's directly modify our floats. Let's do it quickly and move on, so to say. So uh, operator slime is actually a little faster than making those temporaries with the uh, binary non-member functions that we defined up here.